Hey there folks, welcome to another train simulator video. Today we're taking another look at the Alco RS3 from the third party developers for train simulator. The guys at Diesel Workshop. Oh! Caught me by surprise. <laughs> uh, they have come out with another North American Eastern Fallen Flag railroad pack in the form of Erie Lackawanna. It's the same price as the New York Central pack. You get a bundle for 15 bucks. You get driver, non-driver variant, uh, dynamic numbers, um, and a ton of other variations. So this is not just a repaint, and uh, we're going to be going over that a bit more here in just a minute as we watch this beauty roll by. So we are situated in Port Jervis at the uh, the Roundhouse or Port Jervis Yard uh, in New York, which of course is a part of Minerman 146's New York Division Bergen County line on the workshop, which I got to say these things, it's like, uh, you know, when, when two great things randomly or not randomly come together. <laughs> This pack was meant for this line. Yes, you can operate them anywhere the heck you please, uh, but they are specifically meant for this line. Um, you know, it just it adds to some of the better rolling stock that we've got um, for the Bergen line. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna take a look at them now. We're we're sitting here at the roundhouse, just chilling out. We've got uh, we've got one of them sitting over here. This is the now. I may I may fumble this and and mess this up, but I don't think that they had livery names like uh, some other railroads. Like the the New York Central had Cigar Band and Lightning. Uh, these I think it was Merger and Post Merger I think, but uh, you know Gold Gray and Maroon, uh, essentially the colors. I'm, I'm sure someone might tell me that's completely wrong, which is fine, but it looks gold, gray, and maroon to me. And then, of course, the black and yellow. This is uh, this is one of the, the pack that you get here. And just by looking at it, you may notice right off the bat some, some differentiation, some variation between this and the New York Central pack. So, uh, just in case for anyone joining us for the first time, uh, Diesel Workshop, the guys that created this pack, uh, started out making a Montreal Locomotive Works, which was essentially the Canadian version of Alco, uh, Centro do Brasil, that they uh, they sent some narrow gauge Alco uh, RS3s down to Brazil, and they still use them to this day, which is pretty cool. But uh, they started out with that pack. Which, uh, which was equally awesome because it was an Alco RS3, but they started making a couple of uh, North American Eastern Railroad Fallen Flag uh, livery RS3s, and that's what we got here. This is the Erie Lackawanna pack. They recently released the New York Central pack just a few weeks ago. I can't wait to see what else they come out with. I, I hope they keep going with this. Um, I'd, I'd love to see some some New Haven or uh, I don't know maybe maybe Western Maryland fireball wink wink nudge nudge <laughs> that would be fantastic but anyway uh, the matter at hand so what we're gonna do we're gonna take out a, a look at the the New York Central which is what we've got here on the right and the Erie Lackawanna which we've got here on the left there are many uh, differences so it's it's not just a reskin So you'll notice right off the bat, the railing, of course, is different. 
the EL didn't have yellow or gold all the way down the side like the New York Central did. Um, the marker lights are kind of up on these little pedestals here on the EL version. On the New York Central, they were not. They were down lower. Also, they had the, the double headlight, double beam, uh, whereas this one had the, the bigger, wider bulb, which I, I like this one uh, personally a little bit more. Uh, but the bell as well. So the bell was not up here on the front um, of the long hood on the New York Central RS3. It was up here, and they've got a, a, a couple of guards um, to the sides of it as well. And it's a nice model, too. I mean, that is that is very clean. You know, along with the marker lights, too, of course. These little... Uh, I think these, these things on the bottom are like little twist pins, maybe, to tighten it. But even those, man, something so small. Um, you know, that that's almost like Smokebox, uh, FEF, and uh, Big Boy level. Like, that's, that's pretty good. Um, there's other variations as well, like the, the older... Now, both New York Central didn't have the stack cap like this is right here, but this one did. Uh, this one does not got the same horn. I think it's Wabco E2, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But you'll notice in a couple of other areas, the some of the grab bars are different. Um, also, these, I don't think these were radio equipped. Erie Lackawanna was. That's like one of their things that they proudly displayed. As, as time went on with American Railroading, uh, you know, they displayed it on their engines just like every other railroad. But I think that is the antenna right there, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there's a couple other little bits. We'll get up high here. Now, the New York Central one looks a little bit more oily and, and weathered, I guess. But this is the older of the two uh, New York Central. The Lightning livery is a little bit newer, I think. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, so, you know, that's fine that it looks kind of gnarly and, and mangled and oily. This is much cleaner. Still got the nice rivets, the handles, the grab bars everywhere. Got the uh, the mesh and the smokestack there. I think the uh, the diamond plate is the same, but even that man, that looks good. When you look at some diamond plating on the uh, on the decks or the porches of some other locomotives that we have in Train Simulator, like this is top notch, man. That is really clean. The logo itself looks phenomenal, fantastic, amazing, great. It uh, it matches. It looks legit. The nice E and L diamond. The lettering and font looks right. Got the radio equipped logo. The numbering as well. Uh, they, you know, it, it's it's pretty apparent that they went through a great deal to get this stuff right. Uh, you'll notice the number boards as well on the short hood here. They're in a slightly different place. These seem to be kind of pushed forward a little bit. Either that or it's because of this uh, this fairing right here that the marker lights are on make it look that way. But they seem a little bit further pushed back. The number, you know, the font of the number or whatnot, of course, is slightly different. Let's see. This has got the grab bars as well, but they're black, whereas over here they're also black. I don't know why I thought they were different. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. Anyway, um, this bit right here, you've got right there. Now, <clears throat> I don't know the, the ornate -ne ornateness of these things as much as I would like, but I do know that Erie Lackawanna had steam generators on some of theirs, so I don't know if that's got something to do with that. I, I think they would often place extra equipment in the short hood because obviously the engine... The uh, power plant prime mover was in the long hood. So I think there's obviously some extra equipment back there. Could be something to do with the radio. I'm not entirely sure. You'll also notice dual horns. So they got one on the front. <clears throat> Excuse me. They've got one on the front and the back. New York Central does not. And, uh, God, they look so good, man. I love Alcos. Makes me giggle. Makes me feel like a schoolgirl again. I'll go back over and take a look at this one.
Got the builder's plate down there. American Locomotive Corporation, General Electric Co. Schenectady, New York, which of course is where these were built between 1950 and 1952. Uh, Erie Lackawanna, their numbers on these were 914 through 933, and then they skipped uh, to 1005 to 1056, and they have got it right because this is like the second or third to last one that they had, obviously being 1054. But, uh, God, these things look so good. They, they got the coloring right. As, as much as I could tell, they just, they're so nice to look at, RS3s. They were just classy locomotives, you know. They were, uh, they were competing. Well, I wouldn't say competing. Uh, EMD was pretty much winning the war. Um, but they were competing with the GP7. These things had a lot of issues, mainly prime mover-wise. Um, but they still... You know, they, they, they have a, a soft spot, you know, in, in in my soul for trains, as well as a, a lot of other people, I think, as well. But um, it's just a, a cool-looking loco. But uh, anyway, so that's the exterior of this one. I think it's essentially the same. The, uh, the handles, you know, around the deck and the porch are different. Of course, it's got a uh, slightly different logo and lettering as well, which looks... Uh, you know, to a T is as much um, referencing as I try to do looks pretty damn spot on. Like, like, yeah. Um, but anyway, we're going to take a look at the inside of the cab because there's differences in there as well. So, some of you may remember the interior of the New York Central being kind of a green. Go ahead and hop in here. So, yeah, it's green. Windows open. Doors open. There's your brakes. Had this kind of a uh, beam right here that the brake gauges were on. Now we'll go ahead and hop in the EL. Noticeable difference right off the bat. So just bare metal, right? Turn the light on here get the gauge lights on so it's uh it's all same as before as far as I can tell with this gauge lights cab light front and rear headlights we'll turn them both on front and rear numbers as well as class lights that's yeah, rear class yeah and you'll notice there's a radio so these were radio equipped, obviously. There's your radio, and it's a decent looking model as well. I love the cord. That's a spicy cord. Now, there may be other differences in here that I'm not picking up on. Uh, if you do find or know anything, please let me know in the comments below. But uh, I think it's essentially the same. It's got the wood flooring, the seats look identical. Uh, oh, wow, look at that, dude. So it's got, I just noticed this, the, the cable from the radio is fixed to that beam right there. Dude, that's nice. That is really nice. All right, so we've got our markers on front and back. As with the, the uh, New York Central, these work as well. Uh, you've got white, green, and red. Uh, from what I remember, I think white's extra, green is a following section, and then red is end or tail. Um, let me get the headlight off here. Alright, maybe not. So anyway, you can change these. It's U. So if you hit U, it, uh, it, it just makes them white extra. So on their website in... And I, I think the manual, I think the manual just goes over the console stand. Anyway, on the website, it says if you use U and control U, it changes them. For whatever reason, uh, I don't know if they got the keys mixed up or whatever, um, but it, it's, it's not control. For me, it's shift. So if you use shift U, it changes them. And uh, you just got to watch out because it does it pretty quick. So there's green and there's red. This is a pretty cool little feature there. But uh, EL, 
Very Lackawanna. Their, their Alco RS3s did it all. They did switching. I mean, essentially the RS, that's what the RS means, road switcher. Uh, they did switching, you know, long haul duties, passenger services, which is what's pretty cool. That's why I have these set up over here. These are some old uh, heavyweight coaches, uh, which you can grab over at, I think it's called Golden Age of Railroading. And he's got a lot of great stuff over there. Not only these coaches, which, you know, go perfectly tit for tat um, with these locomotives but he's got some uh, freight rolling stock as well and if you don't know about these I'll go over these real quick so he's got he's actually got an eerie like I want to pack that he worked on with Minerman the guy that made this route uh, the Bergen line that we are currently on here in Port Jervis so these are all, uh, this is all rolling stock, 40-footer box cars. He's got hoppers, uh, coal guns, all kinds of stuff. And it, it fits this era. So you can just slap this stuff out here everywhere and you'll be good to go. Uh, a few other things I've got are these old um, open auto racks. Now these are made by the same guys that made the Alco RS3 that we're looking at here. These are the, uh, the bi-level open auto racks. Now, I don't know that we had these in the States that were uh, a bi-level. I think they used to just carry cars on on flat cars, and they, they'd shove them in box cars, and they were typically uh, typically triple-leveled or uh, tri-leveled. Uh, but either way, they look amazing. Um, the guys at Machine Rail, a.k.a. Diesel Workshop, uh, kind, kind of one entity um, as far as I know. They made these cars here. Anyway, you can pick these up on their website. These are freeware. Uh, and there's a patch uh, on Railworks America for these as well. So you can uh, you can throw those on there. You've got uh, Seaboard, B&O, uh, let's see, DTI, I think, Northern Pacific, a um, couple others. But they're, they're pretty cool, and they just they add to the era in the feel. Not only that, but, but back in these days, they still used cabooses and cabooses were cool so there is a there's an entire Erie Lackawanna caboose pack that you can pick up I've got just about one of each set here I got one over here at the uh, rip track or two actually so you could just dot the map with this stuff and they uh, they they fit perfect with these gorgeous Alco RS3s these things are Phenomenal. They look so good. They really do. I am I am highly appreciative uh, that they have decided to create these things. Not only that, but the price point, you know, I, I think is fair as well. Like, uh, considering what you get on Steam, a lot of the time, the published stuff on Steam, that's, you know, that, that standard $20, because Dovetail's got to have a cut, and then Steam's got to have a cut. This is directly from the guys at Diesel Workshop, so it is a, a very fair price. Anyway, uh, we're going to hop in this one right here and head on to, let's say, Campbell Hall. Um, and, and just listen and look and, and all that stuff, and uh, that'll pretty much be it. Just in case you've not seen or heard this thing in the uh, previous two videos I made of these. So go ahead and let peeps on board. We, of course, are in uh, the short hood forward position. Get set up here. There's our short hood light number boards. We don't need class lights on this one. There's our gauge. Nope, that's not the gauge. Here's the gauge. There we go. That's so cool, man. That is a good looking radio. Set our track here. Think we are good to go. Still got that same great horn. That's like one of the best old school uh, Wabco horns in train sim, easily. The bell's fantastic as well. Guy back there's a little bit close. Mm -hmm. 
But Eerie Lackawanna used the heck out of these things. Like I said, they used them with everything. Uh, just road freight, yard stuff, passenger services. And I think they used them right up into the, uh, the mid-70s when they went kaput. But uh, such a cool locomotive. They're just classy. They, they didn't really look like anything else. I mean, yes, they kind of look like the RS1 and RS2, but they were more, we'll say, refined. Just gorgeous. And they, they go with these cars very, very well. So there's, uh, there's quite a bit you could do with these things here. The smoke effect is pretty nice. Um, it seems somewhat dynamic. When you don't have the throttle on, it'll, it'll puff out. Now, Alcos were notoriously smoky. Like, that that's definitely what they were norm, known for. They were smoky as hell. Um, could there have been a little bit more smoke? Yeah. You know, but... But then again, like, if, if it was kept in tip-top shape, it may not smoke as much, burn as much oil. Um, that and the sound. I think if I had to, to, to point out one thing about this pack is, is just the, the chug. Like, the sound is all right. I don't have a problem with the sound. It's more so the levels, like the editing uh, of the, the sound levels themselves, if they were a bit louder. Now, there is... Uh, a pack that someone has created over on Railworks America that you can try out. Uh, but again, you know, like anything else, I'm not responsible if you, you know, burn your computer down. Um, so, so try that at your own risk, if you will. But it's it's supposed to uh, increase the volume and the smoke and stuff like that. So that is available if you so choose. God, these things just, they are picture freaking perfect out of here, man, on this line, on the Bergen line. This guy needs to turn around. Buddy, looking the wrong way. But yeah, once again, the new pack, Erie Lackawanna bundle, 15 US dollars, not sure whatever monetary and any other countries inside US dollars um, but 15 bucks you're gonna get two both liveries and they're not just grease skins I tried to cover as, as much as I noticed myself uh, as far as the you know the differences within the the models and the railroads but uh, I think that's gonna do it they're gonna head on down to Campbell Hall and who knows where from there but that's it, guys. Go pick this pack up if uh, if you're into this sort of thing. It's it's good, just like all their other stuff, really. Everything they have on that website. But I will link everything below once again. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Take care. We'll see you next time.